All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a really exciting topic and offering to share with all of you. Uh, it is unlocking potential, the power of direct indexing in wealth management. You know, when we think about it, two of the big drivers in our firm's success over the years has been the early adoption of technology in finding ways to add value to all of our client relationships. I think today's presentation will touch upon both. You know, with the advent of new technologies in the direct indexing space, we feel this is an investment offering that can add a lot of value for the appropriate client situation. The great thing about our firm's independence and role as a fiduciary is that we are able to look for the best solutions out there for both our firm, the use of the technology, but also for you as our clients. And we spent you know, over a year doing so with, with this direct indexing uh, provider. So we're really excited to share what it looks like with you all today. Before we get into it, just as a reminder, you know, this direct indexing solution is really meant to be used with one taxable accounts. It's not meant to be used with, you know, 401ks, IRAs, Roth IRAs. It's really only meant to be used with taxable accounts. And given the technology and the infrastructure behind it, there is a minimum of $250,000 to be invested. That can be, you know, securities, cash, whatever it may be, but there is a minimum account size for this type of solution. So I just want to point that out before we get too far into the presentation. Our presenters today will be, um, you know, really myself just doing an intro here. I'm the CIO and Wealth Advisor with Boucher Financial Group. And we also have Paolo LaPietra, who is a Wealth Advisor and Portfolio Strategist, along with Edward Wilhelm, who's a Portfolio Analyst. And as, as I said, it took us over a year to, uh, you know, nail down the solution. Both Paolo and Ed were instrumental in that process. Uh, another colleague of ours, Dave Clark, was also a big member and, and factor in in our research and due diligence as we, you know, have met with different firms, different providers to bring this to all of you today. So today's focus, before I turn it over to Paolo, we're going to be talking about what is direct indexing. We're going to talk about who can benefit from it. We're going to look at the technology enhanced tax loss harvesting that this brings to the table. And finally, what does this process look like for you as the end user, as the client in a solution like this? So again, without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Paolo LaPietra, who can share more about what is direct indexing. Over to you, Paolo. Thanks, Ryan. So what is direct indexing? Direct indexing, also known as custom indexing, is one of the fastest growing categories in the wealth management space. We could see uh, from the graph on the left that direct indexing is forecasted to have a faster year-over-year -year growth rate compared to the ETFs over the next five years. And the reason behind this and what we'll show during the presentation, direct indexing offers personalized tax solutions, tailored risk management, customizable investment views, the option for values-based portfolios, and also the ability to add value in both up and down markets. So this chart does a great job showing the evolution of investing. Technology has impacted so many areas of our everyday lives. And here we're seeing how it's impacted the way that we invest. Since mutual funds were introduced in the 40s, They've been a great way for investors to gain access to diversified, professionally managed portfolios. The issue with mutual funds is their lack of tax efficiency due, due to capital gains distributions that mutual fund users usually see at year end, and also the high fees due to active managers that run that mutual fund. Then in the early 90s, the industry continued to evolve with the introduction to ETFs, standing for exchange traded funds. And this was a major step forward because ETFs tracked an index, which improved tax efficient, uh, efficient efficiency compared to mutual funds by getting rid of those year end capital gain distributions. And it also dramatically reduced the cost by getting rid of those active managers. Now today we have access to direct indexing or custom indexing, which has the ability to take ETFs one step further by allowing investors to create their own index to track 
unlocking the ability for deep customization and also stock, uh, individual stock ownership. So let's start at the core of how custom indexing works. With an ETF or a mutual fund, which we see here on the left, as an investor, you're buying a singular investment, but that singular investment is made up of hundreds of different companies. And ETFs or mutual funds could give you exposure to all different areas of the market, whether it's the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, MSCI IFA, you name it. What custom indexing allows us to do is track those same indices and even customize those indices. But instead of owning a singular investment wrapper like an ETF or a mutual fund, you'd own individual shares of a company that are part of that index you're tracking. So why is this an advantage? So aside from the customization that Ed will get into later in the presentation, the primary advantage to owning individual stocks instead of a mutual, uh, mutual fund or an ETF is due to the tax loss harvesting. This chart here looks at the Russell 1000 from 1990 to 2023 and shows the percentage of stocks that were positive, which is highlighted in blue, and the percentage of stocks that were negative, which is highlighted in black. And what this data shows is on average, 37% of stocks are down in any given year. So where the advantage of owning individual stocks that track an index instead of owning a mutual fund or an ETF lies, or in the years like you know, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2023, where the overall index is up. So for instance, if you owned an ETF that tracked the Russell 1000 in 2023, your holding would be up roughly about you know, 26%, providing no opportunity to tax loss harvest. Now on the flip side, if you had a custom index that tracked that same Russell 1000 in 2023, your portfolio too would be up around that same 26%, with the difference being the ability to tax loss harvest on all those stocks that were down during that year. This is a major tax breakthrough for investors. Tax loss harvesting is a pivotal component in investment management because when you harvest losses, you could use those losses to offset any gains each year or write up, you know, up to $3,000 of losses on your taxes that year and have the remainder of those losses carry forward in perpetuity for future offset of gains. So let's take a closer look and see how, you know, exactly how this works. So this chart does a great job of showing what the process looks like when tax loss harvesting in a custom index. And I feel like everything you know, makes more sense with a specific example. So for instance, say in a custom index, one individual stock position was Coca-Cola. And at some point in the year, Coca-Cola was negative. This creates an opportunity to sell Coca-Cola and harvest those losses, which is represented in the box to the left. So now we have $5,000 worth of losses, which is also shown in that red box under harvest losses. But now we have cash that needs to be reinvested. Now, you can't just go buy, rebuy Coca-Cola because that would violate the wash sale rule, which is a rule that states you cannot buy a stock that you sold for a loss within 30 days. So in order to remain fully invested and continue to track the index, we will buy a stock that's very similar to the stock that we sold for a loss. So again, in this example, if we sold Coca-Cola, we would buy Pepsi, a very similar company. The reason why we buy a similar company to the stock we sold is to ensure the overall portfolio continues to track the index as closely as possible. And this creates continuous tax loss harvesting in years that the market's up and down while also remaining fully invested in the market, which is a major tax benefit for investors. Now, as you can imagine, custom indexing requires an incredibly sophisticated software. On top of owning hundreds of individual stocks that are looked at on a daily basis for tax loss harvesting opportunities and replacement for those stocks, there's also multiple different ways we could customize these indices, which Ed will get into later. Our investment team here at Boucher went through an extensive 12 month search for the best custom indexing software, where we interviewed multiple different providers. And after this extensive search, we decided to leverage Canvas software, which was built by O'Shaughnessy Asset Management. Aside from Canvas software being very competitive in fees, having the strongest technology and the deepest customization, 
we found O'Shaughnessy to have a strong track record of working in this space, which is what which was a very important piece to the decision making process. So let's talk about who can benefit from a custom index. Custom indexing might not be right for every investor. So this slide breaks down the groups that custom indexing may make the most sense for. So starting at the top with HNW or high net worth investor, this would be someone looking to unlock the tax loss harvesting benefits of owning individual stocks. Or you might be a company and executive looking to add some risk management to your portfolio. So for instance, an executive at Regeneron could have the need to build a portfolio that excludes the biotechnology uh, sector since their compensation is so highly correlated to that space. You also might be an activist that's looking to add specific ESG considerations to your portfolio or a local business owner that wants to maximize capital losses in their portfolio to help offset, offset future business sale gains. Also, you might be a loyal employee of a publicly traded company that has a large concentration of your company stock and is looking to trim that position down in the most tax efficient manner. So what's needed to get started? An investor would need a taxable account uh, with a balance of $250,000 or more. The reason why there's a minimum of 250,000 is due to buying individual stocks. You know, so for instance, if you had a custom index that was tracking the S&P 500, you would need to buy hundreds of you know, individual stocks to ensure you're accurately tracking that index. And as Ryan pointed out, that taxable account could be funded with cash, stocks, ETFs, or mutual funds. And it doesn't need to be one or the other. It could be funded with any combination of those. So to recap, custom indexing provides diversification, just like ETFs and mutual funds, by tracking whatever the desired index is that you know, is selected. By owning individual stocks, investors unlock the full potential of tax loss harvesting, Remember from that graph earlier, on average, 37% of stocks are down in any given year. With custom indexing, investors can take advantage of those losses, where investors in ETFs and mutual funds can only tax loss harvest if the overall fund is down. Also, replacing sold stocks in a custom index with like-kind stocks, like in the example earlier with selling Coca-Cola and buying Pepsi, this ensures investors are never out of the market while still accurately tracking their index. And finally, you need the 250000 in a taxable account to get started. And again, that could be funded by cash, stock, ETFs, or mutual funds. So on the next part of the presentation, I will pass it off to Ed. Hi. In this section, I'll be going over some key components to tax loss harvesting on the platform. So starting with the model map over. An advantage behind this technology is that we can track a custom index rather than a standard index like the NASDAQ or the S&P 500. Canvas helped recreate our tax managed model using a blend of the available indices on their platform and is designed to track our models at Boucher as closely as possible while minimizing the tracking error, a term I'll explain a bit more in detail on the next slide. Many of you are familiar with QQQ, which is one of our core equity positions and tracks the NASDAQ 100 or the 100 largest stocks on the NASDAQ. This posed some difficulty during the mapping process due to the concentration of securities within the index. So Canvas actually went ahead and, and developed a new index on their platform designed to mimic the QQQ and they called it the OSAM Next Gen 100. It was such a success that it's actually now available for other users on the platform to use in a similar blended custom index or as a standalone. So moving on to tracking error and what it is. Tracking error is essentially the difference in performance between the target benchmark and your actual portfolio. Because the system is looking for tax loss harvesting opportunities on a daily basis, and the underlying securities that you're invested in are changing on a frequent timeframe, the performance will differ from our exact models here at Boucher. 
The tracking error is a way to measure this and lets us monitor the models to ensure we are achieving investment goals while taking advantage of the tax loss harvesting. So on this graph, we see on the y-axis, we have the returns, and on the x-axis, we have different time periods. And we'll see that your portfolio returns in the blue, these would be the actual portfolio returns you're seeing in your account, compared to the benchmark or our target model in green. In the highlighted area in gray there is what we would consider the tracking error. So it is just the difference in the two returns and it is a moving target uh, that changes over time. So what contributes to a lower initial tracking error? Funding an account with pure cash allows for the lowest possible tracking error, but often we are taking a pool of individual stocks or ETFs and transitioning them into our model. The initial tracking error tells us how closely the current portfolio will track relative to our target model. Realizing more gains at the start, having losses to offset those gains, or having cash available will all help contribute to a lower initial tracking error. Below is a table depicting the different scenarios based on tax costs for the initial transition. The last two line items are the most important, the onboarding tax cost and the tracking error. And this shows us what we'd be looking at in a specific client situation. As we move to the right, we're looking at a higher onboarding tax cost and therefore reducing that tracking or error as we transition a larger percentage of the portfolio into our model. And this is completely custom to the client specific needs. We're not bound to the 25, 50 and full transition points. We can customize it based on the specific tax costs that we're looking to achieve. But this lets us break it down from an initial perspective. The transition analysis is really a balance between taxes and the tracking error. In this graph, we see that on the y-axis, the tracking error, and on the x-axis, the tax costs that would impact the client. With more gains being realized at the start, it allows for a lower initial transition or tax cost. The first point, the incumbent, is the current portfolio as it stands prior to any trades being made to transition over the portfolio. And we see that lower point, the avoid taxes. We are typically able to avoid taxes and transition over a portion of the portfolio, reducing the tracking error off the bat. However, the amount that we're able to reduce the tracking error by is dependent on the amount of losses available to offset those gains, as well as any cash available to kickstart the process. And then as we move out to the right, we see the tax cost increase and the tracking error decrease uh, as we take more gains and lower that tracking error. So what does this look like for you? Our first step is setting up that transition analysis where our team will analyze your portfolio and look for the best initial funding options based on your goals and situation. And this is done by uploading a portfolio onto the software and running the transition analysis. Typically, our team is running multiple transition analysis with different combinations of securities and ETFs, as well as different amounts of cash to kickstart the process. We also input your specific tax information, which is completely tailored to the individual client and then gives us that tax cost. So whenever we're reviewing the process, we're looking at it in terms of realized gains, but also then based on your tax brackets, what the actual tax impact is to the client. From there, we're looking to optimize the process moving forward out into time once set up. And this is done by setting an ongoing tax budget and a target tracking error. And these are two custom inputs that change based on exactly what we're trying to tailor the solution to. This can also be updated at any time in the future as things change. So as Paulo mentioned in his example, a Regeneron employee, um, we have the ability to remove uh, either industries, sectors, but also specific securities, um, and then also referred to as nearest neighbors, so securities that are most similar to that specific company. So I use Regeneron in this example, um, screening out companies similar to pre prevent an overweight exposure.
We also have the ability to exclude areas of the market based on values. So this can be anything from carbon intensity or water usage, as well to social and government's values. So just to recap, the accounts are designed to track our managed models here at Boucher by creating a custom index. The process starts with the transition analysis and is customized to your specific situation. Tracking error is used to measure the difference in performance between the actual portfolio and the target. And this allows us to ensure that we're still meeting the investment objectives. And we also have the ability to customize the portfolio composition through different exclusions, whether that be individual stocks, sectors, industries, or based on certain values. I'm now gonna hand it back off to Ryan for a few closing remarks. Great job, Ed. Great job, Paolo. Appreciate all the insights on this. You know, for us, new platform. Like I said, it's it's the technology that's available to us now has been evolving, and it's at the point now where you know we're very comfortable, you know, bringing this and sharing it with clients where it may be a good solution for you. Um, like I said, and and we shared earlier, it may not be the right fit for everyone, but. If it's something where you think, you know, you may find some value in it, or it may pertain to accounts you have with us, or, or maybe accounts outside, maybe, you know, cash that you have, or maybe an individual uh, security portfolio uh, that we want to try to mirror more towards our model portfolios, reach out to us, let us know. We'd, we'd love to show you what the platform looks like, you know, what goes into making these decisions, right? There's not... I don't think it's a one fit or one sort of solution for everyone. It's it's really nuanced. And that's where, you know, we've already started working with a few clients going through the ins and outs of managing that, you know, tracking error with how much taxes you want to take on. And again, it it takes some conversation, but it can be a, uh, a nice solution on an ongoing basis uh, to complement the ETF portfolios that we manage today. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Again, if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to our offices, reach out to an advisor that you've been working with and uh, see if we can do an analysis to see if this is a right fit for you in your situation. So once again, thank you, Ed. Thank you, Paolo. And thank you to all of you who joined us today. Have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon.